everyone, and welcome back to One Eye Dragon Entertainment. My name is Masamu, and I'm going to be your host for today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we continue our playthrough of Welcome to Chi Chester 3, Demon of Chi Chester in the Last Day. Now, excuse me. This will probably be the last time I play this particular game until it's released. Because right now, this is just a preview of the game that Treyarchy was nice enough to let me use. But the game is not out yet, so instead of going ahead and playing through the whole game and spoiling everything for everyone, I'm just going to go ahead and make this the final episode of this game for now until the game's official release. So with that said, let's go as far as we can in today and we'll pick it up again next time when the release comes, when it's officially released. So let's do this. Dude. All right. Here we go. You don't particularly want to talk to anyone else for the time being, and so you locked your bedroom door. Good start with reading there. Gretel seems to be handling the situation in her own unique way. She must be pretty upset, really. Not surprising, though. Gretel and Cindy get along very well. I just wish Grenda would confide me a bit more. Unless she still sees me as an enemy. Whoa. Are we experiencing a love birthing between Grendel and Masamune? We'll have to find out. <sighs> we'll have to do something special before we leave. You hear a very familiar scraping sound coming from your bedroom door. Oh no, not this time. You rush over to your bedroom door just in time to see your key being slowly pushed out of the lock. Grabbing hold of the key, you manage to force it back in the lock. Ow, ow, ow! Randall? Yes, it is. Let me in. Now. Oh, no. I locked the door for a reason. Ah, having some quality alone time, are we? Alone time time, are we? <laughs> you do have a dirty mind at times, Grendel. And this is coming from the guy who woke up from a dream he was having. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no. I just wanted to collect my thoughts before meeting Cindy later. Ah, right, right. I'll leave you to your Cindy thoughts then. Ha! <laughs> <sighs> You listen as Grendel walks away. She's gone. Dealing with Grendel can be so draining at times. Peace again. Cindy shouldn't really be up and about now, but she just can't stay away from her work. Or her brick lecturers either. Oh no. What the? You rush over to your bedroom door to see a circular drum drill protrude through the door. It suddenly stops and is then retracted. Your door key and its surrounding wood fall on the floor. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Grendel walks in and makes herself comfortable on your bed. <laughs> she kicks her legs back and forth and beckons you to join her. She was looking quite glum, which, considering everything that has been happened, isn't exactly a surprise. I suppose that damage will be added to my bill. I wanted to talk to you! Oh? What about? I... 
I... Come on, spit it out. Spit out. <sighs> I think it's time that you know that I erased Cindy's memories when we first arrived. <laughs> I had a feeling you were involved in something. Just couldn't remember what, though. This isn't funny. Don't you think I know that? Sorry. Sorry. So, uh... Why did you do it? I didn't want her to stop doing what she loved. And she knew that today... Today? What's so special about today? Apart from us leaving. I'll come to that in a moment. Go on. You might as well tell me the full story now. You haven't got anything to lose. <sighs> Two years ago, the council heard rumors of some organization conducting experiments on people. We found only one. Our erstwhile tourist guide, Cindy. I, imag I managed to get various blood and various other samples from her and... Er... Uh, how? You do not want to know. Anyway, our scientists found her body was being destroyed at a cellular level at a fixed speed. Which would indicate... Nanobots. Precisely. Not good. It doesn't get any better. I find that hard to believe. Oh, you will. Rabbit, you will. Anyway, the scientists estimated that she would live up until just before midnight. Huh? When, Grendel? When? Today? What? I'm... Sorry? I... 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 Grendel, you should have told me ages ago. I didn't tell you as it would upset my plans. Damn your plans, Grendel! I'm sorry. <sighs> Tell me, has all your deception been worth it? <sighs> if Cindy is still doing what she loves, then yes, it has been. This isn't just about you. I can't say I totally agree with how you've handled things. But it's your operation and not mine. It doesn't give us much time for anything now then. We can still do lots. It'll just have to be condensed down a bit though. Because my mission was also to make sure she was happy till the very end. I made a promise that I would see this through to the end no matter where it went. That's what I'm going to do. You are not going to change anything in that regard. Steadfast, Grendel, steadfast. There's nothing I can do to change anything anyway. I had hoped for some more time, but... <sighs> Did you look for a cure or something? We looked into blood transfusions, but every drop of blood would have to be replaced. Plus, these nanobots are a crafty lot, with the ability to hide and attach themselves to various organs. There is, of course, one rather obvious problem. It shouldn't be possible. Indeed, it shouldn't be, but it is. Couldn't even destroy the things either 
They were tripled hard with lightning fast self reproduction. Even tried EMP pulse, too. Ah. So it was you who caused that commotion in Barrow, Alaska. Well, not me personally. It was our science guys. Same difference. <laughs> I presume it didn't do much then. Although you did manage to affect the lives of 4,000 odd people. It's what comes of vastly underestimating the AI for the nanobots. Hmm. Are you sure they didn't make a mistake and say, Oh, I don't know. Try to use an ignition coil to say, make toast? Oh. Uh, how did you know? Your scientists were never much good, Grendel. I would have thought that the tendency to blow <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, really? <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't think I want to trust those scientists. Anyway, I would have thought that the tendency to blow themselves up was a bit of a giveaway. Man, that's as bad. Don't ever trust those scientists, ever. Some are good, though. And I hope those came up with a plan to help the residents of Barrow? Don't worry. They were fully compensated. I'm sure they are just loving their new ice rink. Even the destruction of a city unintentionally revealed an interesting result, though. Nothing worked. Yes. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Those weren't the words of the remaining scientists, but the sentiment is the same. How confident the results are, were your remaining scientists? 100%. There were no errors or mistakes in the results. It happens tonight. Why didn't you come to me the Phoenix Custodians for help. I believe you asked me that once before and the answer is still the same. Do you think they would freely help us without some sort of compensation? Besides, the technology of these bots are far beyond the technology of either of our organizations. Or in my case, used to be organization. You're not going to let me forget that, are you? Nope. <laughs> In addition, we had no real information about who was behind it all. Excuse me, it was getting in the way. Don't worry, it's a couple years old. It's pretty much on its way out anyways. Your lot would have just laughed, or, or rather, excuse me, it's got an otter case, so pretty much nothing can destroy that thing, even if I wanted to. I could run the, my phone over with a truck and it still wouldn't break. But today will probably be the day it breaks. Yeah, I think you probably made the right choice there. Especially with my boss. Hmm. Anyway, you know what this could mean. I think I can get there is a new actor in town, one that is completely hidden from both our organizations, and probably every other one too. And also has access to extremely advanced technology. Aren't you getting a bit conspiratorial? Only one person seems to have been affected. So far. My mission was initiated by rumors, yes. During my time, other agents did gather enough evidence that there could be another organization working in the shadows. Could? Verification proved impossible. Everything ended with either dead ends or... dead agents. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. 
Then there was the note from the classroom. Dun dun dun! What? Note. What classroom? The one that you should have gone to and welcome to Chichester too, you moron! The note left in the classroom. Oh, of course you won't remember. Because you didn't do the ending, that's why. Otherwise you wouldn't know about it. But actually I did, I just didn't want to use that ending because it kind of bored me. Sorry. I don't remember anything about either of those. At the start of the week, you... We went with her to her lecture on bricks. Did. I still don't remember. No, you wouldn't. I didn't wipe your memory about it. That is a pretty cool way to go ahead and uh, cover that up now that I'm thinking about it. I wonder if I actually did do that ending. If he would have remembered it. Interesting. Moving on. Why? Will you shut up and let me finish? <sighs> anyway, the classroom was empty, so we looked for anything to indicate that the lecture was taking place elsewhere. But, instead we found this note. I recovered it after you threw it away. Why live? Why carry on making everyone else miserable? Why, why, why? Be gone to whatever hell you deserve and hopefully as painful as possible. Woohoo, that's kind of mean. That's mean. Huh. Wonder who could have wrote that? What's the purpose of this? I don't know. It was probably just to intimidate Cindy, which it did succeed in doing. Whatever it was done for though, I didn't want Cindy or yourself to just give up on everything. So I did a quick bit of memory wiping with my trust frying pan. Curse you and your frying pans, Brando! Ah, so that was the cause of the massive headache I had, as if you even had to guess that to begin with. Yep. <laughs> Grendel jumps off the bed. I'll be with you all day today. <laughs> okay, I gotta stop putting words in her mouth. Thanks. I appreciate it. Just don't fall apart later, okay? I won't. And I probably will. Gotta stop putting words in his mouth, too. Excuse me. Several days ago, Lorinda Ella makes plans. Lorinda Ella is in Masamune's office looking at some photographs. This is not looking too good. <laughs> Here are a few more photographs from yesterday. This does not look good at all. That's Catherine's voice. I gotta, I gotta think of another voice for Lorinda. Yes, it might be look bad, but surely there is some explanation. What? There is absolutely no excuse for Masamune to be with any other girl. Especially one with the Council of the Unseen. But in some photographs, he is clearly being hit by what appears to be a drawing pen. That could mean she's either beating information out of him, trying to recruit him, or... Or, I won't have it. Worst of all, some weird mating ritual. I highly doubt it's the latter, and I really don't see Masamune being a masochist. He is one of less pervier people in this organization, which does make a nice change. You just don't know what people will do when they're around short, 
beautiful people. I think I might have found her voice. Surely the important thing is that the two, despite their uh, differences, do seem to be hanging out together way too much for deadly enemies. Yes, that's how I'll get him. I'll make him pay for being with her. Then I'll make her pay for being with him. They will all pay. Then he can stay with me forever. I didn't mean it. <sighs> oh, absolutely wonderful. Real nutcase here. Huh? What was that? Nothing, nothing. Nut job. He can't come back to this organization now, as he's been seen with Grendel and this other person. But he still needs to be back with me, so how? <laughs> of course, those two, they've survived, somehow. They're excommunication, so to speak, so it's time to put them to work. The boss will make it happen. Oh, really? Insurrection. After what seems like an eternity, Lorinda finally arrives at the very topmost floor of the Phoenix Custodian's building. This was where the boss, head of the organization, worked when not attending meetings. Walking through endless corridors and showing her security badge, accountant, security guards, she arrives at the correct place. A nondescript door. No name tag or identifying feature denoting the status of who occupied the room behind. There was, however, a very large sign hanging from the door handle. Do not disturb! This matter is far too important for a silly sign to get in my way. Uh, we're, um, busy, uh, could you come back some other time, please? This is important! You can't wait! Lorinda can hear some furtive exchanges, but can't make out what they are discussing. Yes, I can. Wait, there. Do not come in! I'm not standing for this! Lorinda walks into an off the an office. With no one there, she looks around to try and find where the voices were coming from. Hidden from sight was another door. Lorinda put an ear to it. That's right. Do it like that. Like this? Oh, yes. Ever so gently now. It's sensitive. Huh? I think I've got it now. Yes. Yes, you have. Now turn slightly that way. But it won't. Trust me. You'll be fine. It'll make me happy. <sighs> I can't waste time with this idiocy. Before her, Lorinda can spot the boss and his personal secretary, Tia, playing what appears to be a video game. That looks like Cutie Alliance Trooper. Ahem. Ah. The boss and Tia should have known. You didn't say anything, did you? What shall I say? Uh. Oh no, 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 I didn't see a thing. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see a god darn thing. Yeah, think about that one for a second there. <sighs> ah, good. 
I did put a sign on the door saying, do not disturb, you know. What I need to talk to you about couldn't wait. I'm sure I could have, Lorinda. So nothing is more important than your pornographic games, then? Pornographic? Don't worry, my dear. It's just another word for fun. <laughs> oh, blush, blush. I'm so surprised you're still here, Tia. Especially after our last chat. Huh? Don't you remember? No? Lorinda glowers over Tia. So you don't remember our conversation from a few days ago? The one where I hit you like this? Tia's eyes start swelling and she starts crying. She crawls over to the boss who gladly starts hugging her. Thank you, once again. Ugh. Anyway, can you get rid of your little pet now? I need to discuss something with you. Am I just a pet to you? She means it in an affectionate way, Tia. Okay then. Take an hour or so break, Tia. When you come back, we can carry on from where we left off. If you can bring back those items I mentioned earlier too, that would save a lot of time in the next section of the game. Okay, we'll do. Tia gets up, wipes her eyes, eyes, and runs off. You really are taking her advantage of her, aren't you? She's at a legal age, Lorinda. Eighteen, to be precise. I believe legal here in the United States of America is 21, but we're gonna let that one slide. You're making her play a pornographic game that's been banned in every country in the world, even Japan. I don't know what that's gotta do with anything, but okay. How the hell did you make her play such an exquisite game? I just told her it's part of her training. <laughs> she is still as naive as when she started then. Yeah, it's great. Even when I told her what you were like? Fortunately, she didn't believe you. Otherwise, your life here would have been rather more interesting. <laughs> So don't worry, it all worked out well in the end. Very well, if you know what I mean, as it allowed. That's enough! I don't really want to hear the rest. Are you sure? Yes, very sure. By the way, would you like to join us? I'm sure Tia could learn a lot from you. I'm pretty sure I can make it worth Moss the Moon as well to tear you out, so to speak. Ugh! You really are a creepy pervert, you know? I have to make sure all my employees are happy. Especially the female ones. <laughs> Ironically enough, though, I'm here to talk about Moss the Moon, eh? Oh? You might be able to per. No! It's about these! Lorinda waves some photographs at the boss. You're certainly in a bad mood. You will be too once you've had a look at these. I don't know why they're all starting to sound country, but there you go. <coughs> this had better be good. Let's go into my office and I'll see what you brought me. Bought me. Lorinda spread out the photographs onto the boss's desk and waits impatiently as he looks at each one. Mm. Is this Boss Moon, eh? Yes. Mm. It looks like he'll have serious questions to answer when he gets back. Fraternizing with the enemy, indeed. 
Although, this picture is... It looks like he's being tortured with... A frying pan. Not good. Not good at all. We've got to pull him out before Grendel kills him. That's a good... Wait, what? Grendel is clearly torturing the poor chap. I know it's his holiday. I know his holiday is nearly over. But we had better do something now. That's not what I'm interested in. Eh? Look at this photograph. Interesting photo of two people eating, but I don't understand. Why show me this photograph? Look at the woman in the photograph. Yes, she's, um, very nice. Ah, iterate. Why show me this photograph? The woman in that picture is Cindy Eglantine. That means what to me? She's a tour guide and brick lecturer. Okay. Grendel probably set her up with Moss and Moody to get in between me and him. This Cindy person is obviously a civilian and so of, and so of no concern of ours. No! That's where you're wrong! Those two are obviously planning on taking Masamune from me! Or you could be reading far too much into things. Never! Masamune is mine! Mine alone! I'm not going to allow anyone else near him! I'm going to make sure he can't go near anyone else ever again, too! So, the rumors are true then? You are! Complete nutcase. I want you to send the vocal screamers. <laughs> those losers. Why? Teach those two biatches a lesson they won't forget. Ha <laughs> ha! Then, teach that trumped up Lothario a lesson too. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Masamune is mine! All mine! But he's been near them. So he must be eliminated too! Oh, uh, Rinda? I'll get him stuffed and mounted! Then he'll never leave me or be with anyone else ever again! Rinda? Rinda! You agree with my plan? Hell no! Bumping off Grendel may just be acceptable with a civilian around, but not Boss of Moon Day. He is far too valuable to us, for one. Secondly, I expect we'll have a good answer for what these photographs show. Thirdly, killing this Sandy person would be a step too far, even for this organization. The boss gathers up all the photographs into one neat pile and hands them back to Lorinda. <sighs> what you want isn't going to happen in any shape or form. I suggest you go home, Lorinda. Take the next few days off as well. Destroy all of all the photographs in the usual manner. Goodbye, Lorinda. I want to see you when you come back. But until then, you won't be permitted in the building at all. So, so, you aren't going to do anything? I am doing something. I'm telling you to have a few days off. You weren't. Well. What? There's something more to be said, Lorinda. Now. If you excuse me, I've got some uh, lessons to give in a moment. The door is that away. I always thought you were overrated. You still here? Or do I have to call security? 
So, I had planned for this unwanted eventuality. Mm. All right, what do you think you're doing? Something that's necessary. You could call this my parting shot. <laughs> Don't do anything rash now. I'm not. Goodbye, sir. It's been perverted knowing you. Hmm. Oh, I did. I'm back. I brought some of these. I hope they fit in. Lorinda turns around to see Tia standing in the doorway, visibly shaking. <laughs> I need a female actress. Oh, that way these would have more of an impact than they actually do. <laughs> you killed him! Ma, you are quick on the uptake today. Please, I won't tell anyone. I know you won't. Oh, she did do. That sucks. Damn, secretaries always causing trouble. Now to contact the screaming vocalists. I bet they'll be dying to do what I want after what they've been through. <laughs> Meanwhile, the reason. Grendel, wait. You managed to catch up with Grendel walking down the stairs to the hotel lobby. What? I get the sense you're not telling me everything. I told you why I'm here and why you're here too. What? Yes, you told me why you're doing it, but I get the feeling that you've been trying to push Cindy and me together for the past week. So the question is, why? Don't you find her, don't you find her attractive? I gotta get the Southern out of my voice now. Stop avoiding the question. Do you remember what I said about Lorinda? Lorinda? What's she got to do with it? Oh yes, I wiped your memory about that too. I think you used your frying pan a bit too enthusiastically. Maybe just a little bit. For year, for once, you're probably correct. It's going to waste time explaining everything again. So... Lorinda was the one that arranged your little car accident. He's a right nut job. I. I. But who were the two that attacked? Well, tried to attack me. That would be Missouri Cordy and Hebtia. I believe their names were. Never heard of them. Their little group is called the Screaming Vocalists. Doesn't ring a bell either. I suppose it's not surprising, as the use of mercenaries and hired killers has to be kept quiet for deniability. I'm pretty sure they weren't trying to kill me. They weren't. The runner just wanted you badly injured so that you would have to cancel your holiday plan and stay with her. Not sure how I feel about her now. It's understandable. But you will have to get your feelings in check by the time we get back. However, why not take your mind off mind of Lorinda and think of Cindy instead? To be honest, you'll be much better off with her anyway. I think she likes you, so that's a big plus in your favor. And it would certainly be for life. Boo, Grendel. Boo. That was terrible. Grendel, you're awful. Come on now. 
she's only got one more day to live. Boo! Sorry, bad joke. Yeah, it was. Shame on you, Grendel. How dare you? I thought better of you. But it would make you happy, Cindy happy, and me happy too. So win-win all around. Guys, ironically enough, I was thinking that I should do something special later today. Excellent. And then perhaps I can watch you two in your dreams. Watching through the keyhole it is then. <laughs> Grando, isn't there something else you've forgotten to tell me? No. <laughs> Your mission seems to have been well thought out and detailed, although over, overly convoluted even for you. If you were just interested in Cindy, then you wouldn't need me. I'm not really needed to keep Cindy happy, as you so innocently put it, either. So that means that something else must be going on. You have a plan that's bigger than what you stated already. I told you! I'm keeping a promise! Yes, but that's not all, is it? Drop it! There are some things I don't want to discuss. At least not until afterwards, anyways. But, I said drop it! I'm not going to tell you yet because you'll either blurt it all out to Cindy, or she'll trick you into divulging what I tell you. I don't want to add to her problems. Okay. Well, you tell me everything later. And I mean everything. I will. But not until we've left, okay? Alright. Just keep your side of the bargain. Of course. Come on. Today is not an ideal day to keep Cindy waiting. Oh, God, it still works. All right, everybody. We'll leave it there. This will be the last episode of Welcome to Cheat Chester 3. Until the game is officially released, then we'll pick it up again. So, again, this game isn't released, so there's no links I can give you right now. <clears throat> but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Masa Mune. This has been One Eye Dragon Entertainment. And I hope I get to see you again next time. Bye for now, everyone. Have a good one.